Hi there. There we go. Hmm. Oh, it's uh, no big deal. We have all eternity, so. Yeah. <laughs> I've been really enjoying seeing your uh, short videos. It's uh, still dark here for some reason. It's uh, just 7 a.m. So soon it will be um, light enough to ride my bicycle at this hour. So looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. So um, I was up a little bit early this morning and um, was just sitting in this chair over here going through um, chapter 22 and um, got really quiet and happy. Mm. That was chapter yeah. one and chapter 22? Yeah. That's pretty amazing that we've gone from like chapter one to chapter 22. It is. I was surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> Continue. It's a ribu. Ribu wants to sing, yeah? He must want to. He must want to, because I'm not great at sticking around. Oh, no. Um, I'd rather uh, just sing the spaces between the words. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's this chapter called? The Certitude it's of the Undivided Nature. Just the reading the title is the auspicious beginning, isn't it? Yeah. It's like sometimes I feel like there isn't really much need <laughs> to read the words, like just the, just the, the title of the chapter, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, how about I read um, the first three verses and we see what happens. I don't, I don't really have much more of a um, strategy or a, a plan. Yeah, I mean, a couple of verses stood out, but I, I have no commitment that we um, read or, you know, have to hear them. So I'm more interested in um, just sort of reading to you um, and then seeing what happens. Chapter 22, the certitude of the undivided nature. Nidaga, in the manner expounded earlier by the Supreme Isvara, the Lord of the entire manifest world, in a way that can be easily understood by all, I shall tell you further about the complete and perfectly full Brahman, which is the witness of all the moving and unmoving which is the self of all, which is the mind, which is of the nature of the substratum of all the universe, which is itself all and which pervades all. Son, you shall enjoy the full Brahman bliss by the firm ceaseless certitude that I am the non-dual supreme Brahman, the mass of existence consciousness bliss the peaceful, of the nature of the motionless and permanent, the eternal, the partless, the delusionless, the taintless, and the formless. There's not an atom of doubt in this. The awareness that I am myself is also of the nature of consciousness. What appears as manifold is also of the nature of consciousness. 
the awareness of you and I is also of the nature of consciousness. What is seen as all is also of the nature of consciousness. What is said to be the self of knowledge is also of the nature of consciousness. What is said to be the mass of knowledge is also of the nature of consciousness. What is called the shining self is also of the nature of consciousness. What is known as the Supreme Brahman is also of the nature of consciousness. Somehow, like two lines stood out like more than all the other lines. Yeah. The the two lines. Two lines stood out more than all the other lines. The first one was okay. The second one was it was one I was supposed to know. But <laughs> well, it was like there is not an atom of doubt in. Me. Like I feel like because in this like doubt is your mind really. Like the mind is full of doubt, or yeah, and it might take a different form. And really, there is no mind in the last content. So I like to, oh, and then oh, this other line, this really stood out as a, which is the witness of all the moving and unmoving. Mm. It's not like it was like just three point. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 word witness is kind of a direct pointer somehow. Maybe it is like that charity, like that, that certitude is in a way it's, no, it's not really for yourself. It's not really for yourself, like the self. I suppose it is for consciousness. But not really, it's just like a part of consciousness that got confused. Or something so like it's kind of like the mind like i kind of use the word like the mind of consciousness like the same thing like as the same thing like interchanging i know everybody mm. doesn't do it like that but like everything is mind because of our everything is consciousness <laughs> so like in a way having that certitude it's really only for that it's not really for yourself because it's for that like if if your mind has that certitude then it doesn't need to raise it in you know and if it does raise it out when it has that certitude, it lets the doubt calm down. <laughs> so it enables the, it just enables you to kind of be kind of at peace or be, I am, maybe some people would say, like just being. And really it's like when you're being, then you can notice what's really beyond being. But maybe you can really only notice what's beyond being when you're really being. You know, and it's not like they're different, but of course we believe that they're different. <laughs> like we have, like we believe that being is something that's not. So when we give up all of those ideas, true certitude, like a certitude, it's almost like the antidote. In a way, like that's what this this book is, isn't it? This is all about certitude. Like just be sure, be sure, be sure. So in a way, that's kind of like the antidote to everything. <laughs> like whatever comes up, like oh yeah, but I'm sure. But you can only be sure really by being as a and by looking and by checking not really by blind faith but maybe also by blind faith in a way like trust blind i don't know blind faith is the right word but like trust is also good like i feel like even if you didn't really look or you didn't see and maybe it was your first time coming to these words 
or something like even if you just trusted the words like it would probably if you just trusted the words and like you allowed that what it's saying to just like um you know just quell a word <laughs> like quell quell your doubts is quell a word sure you know, it's to, to quiet or to yeah. somehow subdue. I don't know what's called. <laughs> I don't know from the Middle Ages. I thought that was farmer. Well, I shall quell your gut. So, like, it feels like the certitude is, well, the certitude is for, I suppose everything is for consciousness. And it's not like consciousness is not yourself, but there's even a more true aspect to yourself than consciousness. And that's something that doesn't know anything. It doesn't have certitude. It doesn't need certitude. Neither are one day or, I mean, no idea is touched it. Mm. All of this is for consciousness, I suppose, is what you truly are. Mm. And I suppose maybe it's like in the beginning we take it to be all the spiritual teachings and all like we think they're from me. <laughs> you know, like me, like a separate me. But then even after you know, or like you see that there is no separate me, we still actually, it's not really the end. In a way, like it's not like the end of all. And you can, like, you can still uh, listen to spiritual pointers and they're still really helpful because they're all sort of just quieting down consciousness. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. <laughs> so I'm saying I'm just kind of complaining or clarifying or something. Like <laughs> Talking to myself. <laughs> I am consciousness, which is eternal peace. I am consciousness, devoid of anything moving or non moving. I am consciousness which is of the bondages, bondageless nature of the Supreme. I am consciousness, which is spread as the Supreme. I am consciousness, which is beyond all thought and such. I am consciousness without any world or individuals or the Supreme. I am the Supreme of the nature of the blameless consciousness. Thus, be ever of the certitude that it is you. One, one, one more. The Supreme Brahman is ever the reality. This Brahman can never be unreal. Whatever has the steadfast conviction that I am the Supreme, which is ever the reality, will become the reality. Whoever does not have such conviction that I am ever the reality will remain unreal indeed, son. Be in agreement with this certitude that I am ever the supreme, which is the reality. really exactly like having a dream you know like somehow the words are coming like what we are doing you know we're chatting you know it's like consciousness talking to itself so it's like it's kind of like it's like the dance of consciousness it's like imagine that you did this and you did that you imagined you know, this person and that person but like these words are saying no no i didn't ever do that consciousness is just there just push on and it's like, like that it's like you go to sleep at night and you have a dream and you imagine that you did so many things and then when you wake up in the morning and maybe like maybe the memory of the dream is still like, oh, no, what happened like, like exactly the same isn't it? it's like well, a little clue or something i i take this as real you know help me with that because yes there's the distinction between oh yeah I, I, that was a dream yeah this this is something else yeah. Uh, so how do you how do you take it as real? Like what kind of real? Is it? Um 
um, that there's the the sort of the uh, intentional distinction that you know that was something else, but this right here, mm. it's 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 got to be, or else you know, or else who am I? Yeah, what am I? Exactly, that's the whole point. But mm -hmm. well, what what do you come to with you ask like who am I now? What am I? Well, um, there's sort of there's sort of uh, um, this background of silence and emptiness, and then there's these um, whether it's thoughts or sensations or um, uh, whole constructs that. Um, um, you know, appear to be so important, mm. right? Um, this, this, this need to feel this sort of inner need, sort of bubbling up. You know, need to be, you know, someone. And it doesn't. It's, it's not that the words form themselves that way. Mm. It's this like inner conversations with people where there's a need to be right. Mm. You know that I think that really expresses it well. This need to be right. Yeah. You know? Like that's why who am I is a really great question because you can apply it to anything. So if you see something like that in yourself, you know, you you recognize that there's a need to be right. You know, so like I feel like I need to be right. And you really have that feeling of I, you know, like I really feel like I need to be right. And I do. So it's like that I that we really feel ourselves to be, like we can look for that. You know, because there's kind of two ways in a way when you ask, like, who am I? There's in a way, in a way, I don't know if which way it's supposed to be done, but like, they're both kind of the same. But it's like, like, who am I? So in that way, you're kind of looking for who I feel myself to be and who I think I am and even experience myself to be. But like, it turns out that you actually can't find, like, I can't find any. That's why you're looking for something. You can't find that. And so all you find is like, maybe some energy but like I can see that you know maybe I can find really just kind of a sense but you can see that as well like a sense might be a kind of a sensation and an idea that we connect together but then you recognize but like I see that so that I that I'm taking myself to be so it's not like that but because I'm seeing it so that's not what I am either you know so it's like no no that's not it. and you see that it's not really anything even like an energy or it's kind of like you can kind of see when you're looking at it's really just a it's really just a kind of a paw like and you can't really look at a paw really you know it's like you're just kind of holding some kind of an imagination somewhere <laughs> so then and in a way like who am i really you kind of have to let go of everything you can't even really look even without even any sense of looking like any sense of looking like you can even that seeing as a that sense of any like a looking as kind of like as if like you're looking over that or looking over that but you might be doing it internally so kind of almost like looking around inside so it can be a kind of a it might be a kind of a contraction or constriction in your being as you kind of look around so like when you just kind of let go of everything let go of everything and then it's like it's just maybe it just becomes more apparent that like everything is seen by itself you know so it's not like that i it's like of course you still have to use the word i and you use the word i but like who i really am doesn't have even a sense of an i in it like but we use the word i because i has a meaning like i has a meaning for it. like i myself this is who i am but like who i am it's like it's like almost like the most obvious thing you know, like right now, it's like, it's not really even your background or your foreground. It's just like everything is seen in it. Like exactly like you say, you know, you just know, like you you know that you're aware. You don't have to check that. Like, like I love when an auntie says, it's like, how do you know you're aware? Like you don't really know because you check. You don't know because you look up to the right. You see something up there or you look down there or you look in, you look in or anything like that. It's just like you really, you just know because you just know it's like, you don't even have to question, isn't it? <laughs> um, but 
but in a way it's kind of like that it's like it's just obvious that we're just like seeing everything but in a way when we're just kind of quiet it becomes obvious and in a way like it's almost like you can kind of see it <laughs> but maybe in a more like felt way like so you kind of experience that like absolutely everything that you can perceive like even the smallest sense of an eye or being or something it's appearing in something that is just so you can't really give it any words but like vast or something even though it doesn't really have size and <laughs> um, so in a way everything that you see then becomes just like a thought like that like you see it like that because you know when you're looking inside yourself and you, you see that type of look of, like you're looking around and then you can see that it's like a thought like you said you know it's like you can't really see it. it's just like uh, an idea so everything is kind of like that within this within this that you are like, really within within your being um so therefore everything that's appearing is appearing within you like like a dream mm. like because when you go to sleep at night it's like a dream and i know like you think oh but this has more reality but in a dream like you can actually i don't know like i'm pretty sure yeah, you can practice these things like if you're interested i've been really interested in dreams not like so much anymore but like even when i was young like my dream life was very active you know and then <clears throat> when i was about maybe 19 or 20 i was reading those carlos castanada books you know? so like i think the first one i read was called it might have been called something like the anarchy dreaming and he talked about lucid dreaming and i was like wow and i really wanted to get into lucid dreaming so like i started just really just by wanting to do it and there are certain like practices that you can do enough but when you do some kind of practice like that like any kind of dream practice like remembering your dreams or um kind of encouraging a lucid dream which basically means that you know you're dreaming you can really see that it's exactly the same because in a dream you can be like you're just in a dream and you're like looking around and it looks exactly the same and you can you know in movies they like pinch like am i dreaming but like if you do that in a dream you just feel it so you might go like am i dreaming oh no i'm not dreaming today then you happily like get totally back into the dream again <laughs> like that's not a, but literally everything is like exactly the same like you can see things the same you can smell you can taste you have all your senses and i know there are some differences like the dream world seems to work a bit differently but i wouldn't make that mean that this world has any um reality because even from a dream to a dream can have different things like maybe you have a dream that's totally similar to this one but then you maybe you have a dream you can fly and i know like in this this type of dream usually you don't see people fly so in a way they have different kind of physical laws um so if there's a difference that's the only difference but i wouldn't even really give that a difference because it's just a different type of type of dream you know that you can have different types of dreams like sometimes it might feel like a kind of a prophetic dream like that you you dream something's gonna happen or maybe a spiritual dream like you dream about someone who's passed away and they're talking to you and that maybe touches your heart so it feels like a spiritual type of dream or sometimes you have just those kind of random dreams that are like movies and they move really fast <laughs> you know so they're just all different types of dreams so like this dream is just like a type of a dream mm -hmm. you know it's not necessarily different and like i don't think it's like for me to just say it and like for you or someone else to just say oh okay <laughs> like it's just like you know i'm just saying it because i've explored it but like anyone can explore it if they want to and you know what else i think i might have told you this before but like i saw this like it's almost like it was like just shown to me like one time i fell asleep okay and uh just fell asleep and i started to have a dream like so i started to see images and so i saw this image i think i was like on an island or something there was water and then all of a sudden it's like i could feel it like i could feel i'm going like that because it quite came into my mind or something but like i could feel like uh, all memories coming in like it's and uh like a whole backlog of information so then like i felt there was nothing there was just pictures and then i, I felt like a coming and like so what it was it was full of information like oh yeah i've been here before oh yeah and i know what's over there like across the water and like loads of information came and then I think I knew I was dreaming as well. Like, so I became aware that I was dreaming. And then all of a sudden everything changed and the same thing happened again. Like, and it happened like two or three times. And then I woke up in the bed and like the same thing happened here as well. 
you know like you just wake up and then all of a sudden like you remember like oh yeah like this is who you're supposed to be you know and like this is how your life is and this is where in the world you live like somehow all that information like just comes you know because in a way that's how we give reality to this dream as well it's like you wake up in the morning and maybe not even notice like maybe we don't even notice but it just kind of creeps in like oh yeah this is who I'm supposed to be like my name is such and such and I live in this part of the world and like oh yeah I remember yesterday <laughs> you know I remember yesterday and I remember I have a wife and uh, I know things about her and then like maybe you see her so it's like it's almost like your world is like backing up everything in your in your head it's like totally like a computer and it's like so this is definitely real because loads of stuff happened before and I've seen it so many times but like really all of that can happen in a dream as well and you can have like a whole lifetime in a dream like i don't know if i've ever had a whole lifetime in the dream i've definitely had a long dream but like from beginning to end i haven't but i have heard people saying that they have had like whole lifetime you know you can dream a whole lifetime in like an hour or so. like ananta was saying i don't know i have to ask him again sometime but he was saying a few times that he has this dream like it's like a recurrent dream and he has a whole different life like he have he lives on a farm or something and like there's like some kind of like argument with the neighbor about the land or something i can't remember exactly but like it's kind of a recurrent dream so it's almost like when he's sleeping if he's like living this other life <laughs> like yeah like all these kind of things can happen and i'm sure there's like a million kind of dream dream stories but like apart from what's in a way like even looking to your dreams like that like that's one way of looking you know that that you can um see the quality of the dream and the quality of this and they're the same but like mm. in a, maybe a better way of looking is to just see that it's all arising within what i am which is just mm. like i'm just saying like space <laughs> or something but like you know even space <laughs> Yeah, it's um, like, it, it's like Ribu is talking about um, identity and the, the mm -hmm. reminder to continually identify with that as an antidote mm -hmm. to all this other stuff, to this dreaming and then identifying with the dream. No, you're, you know, the task here is to identify with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess like identity is what makes something seem more real as well. You know, like so you said something like like help me because I am identifying with this. Like um so yeah, like so again it's like an antidote. Like so instead of identifying with something false, like you're kind of you're identifying with something true. But like even to identify with something true, like I mean it's definitely good, but like it's also not true because any type of identity is really from the mind <laughs> but it's still very helpful like i think it's probably better to have like a true identity than a false identity maybe maybe it's not maybe it's exactly the same i think it's actually exactly the same like, <laughs> this is... it must help somewhere if like this i'm sure he didn't waste like however long it took him to <laughs> to speak all these things like yeah but in a way, like just right now, I feel like it's very similar. Like if you're identifying, you're identifying. You're not like free because when you're free, you're, you don't have to identify. Not even that, but like, I mean, that's not really true, but more like just who you are doesn't need to identify. Mm. Um, not it doesn't even need to solve it that. <laughs> but more like it just doesn't. It doesn't identify. But I suppose like the identity thing, like and being sure or not, it's more like just that you see that's what you truly are and you recognize that there is no identity there and that helps you to not identify with all of these things like ideas like i want to be right or you know like these kind of they're kind of personality traits or something right like maybe you could call it or different uh, different ways that your personality behaves you know different things like that but just like seeing them i feel like just seeing them is like enough like because if we get even involved in trying to get rid of them, that's like also a kind of a, a me that's trying to get rid of them. <laughs> it's just another aspect of the same thing. It's a little bit like addiction. Like I'm kind of looking a little bit at addiction now because like I'm kind of like 
admitting admitting in front of class while that I'm totally addicted to sugar. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm uh, kind of, you can't really do anything about being addicted, really. You can't just make yourself not be addicted. You know, it's like, it's just there or it's not there. So like, it's like what the this, what's happening in like the story of like Amber is like, I'm choosing to eat healthier versions of sugar. <laughs> You know, so like you might eat like maple syrup instead of, or like my own home baked cookies that are cooked with maple syrup rather than like something that you buy in the shop. So it's like I feel like I'm eating good food, but I'm still eating something. So it's kind of just moving my addiction like somewhere else. So, you know, it's just like putting it somewhere else. It's part of the same. I'm kind of seeing it as all the same thing. You know, so in a way, maybe like those type of things like identity. And I was like that. So if you're trying to get rid of something, it's just another aspect of the same thing. I don't know. Before coming onto the call, I was um, sort of thinking like Superman or a superhero. Mm -hmm. You know, he lives his life like an ordinary Joe. <laughs> but then, you know, at just the right time, he reveals his his true identity and yeah. you know, does something great. You know, but they're both sort of aspects of the same thing if yeah. I'm right. you know like somehow this is just coming to me now as a I was listening to an anti a little bit and also I have a friend who listens to an anti thing and he was telling me about it as a <clears throat> and it's just some kind of new way of expressing that an anti was saying and uh, it's basically like that you have four bowls you know and in one bowl if in one bowl you put all your perceptions you know, all that you perceive, all everything that you see and your way of perceiving it. Then in, in another bowl, you put all your concepts, everything, what you think you know, you know, so even things that you haven't, you haven't um, perceived directly, like, you know, like, so the world is round. You don't really know that, I mean, unless you've been to space. <laughs> um, you know, so all, all the ideas, everything that you think you know, including like spiritual things. And then in the third ball, which is really the reason why I'm saying this, is like all your kind of desires. And maybe also, I don't know if he said this, but I'm adding this in. <laughs> uh, desires and like expectations, you know, and especially spiritual ones. You know, because I feel like like loads of us, so many of us, maybe everyone who's ever been on the spiritual path at some point for a certain amount of time has these kind of um, expectations or desires that, it should look a certain way like oh like so I'll see my life or the expression of this human being a certain way like I'll experience only joy and maybe I won't experience any of these other things that I've experienced up to now or whatever it is like and um, so you put everything in and then like then you have it one extra ball and like what what can you put in that ball this was his main point <laughs> like what what do you put in the in the last ball, is there anything left? Hmm. After all them things. So you've put all you've taken all your things out, all your desires, perceptions, concepts, everything you think you know, everything you want. That's all in the ball. There's nothing really left. <laughs> you wouldn't even be able to put it in the ball. You need a ball. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> but like I do feel like that that's a big one that maybe continues to come and if it continues to come maybe we need to look at it closer that there's some kind of expectation for something to happen you know so even even if it's that like the sense of identity should never come anything because like I mean even if the sense of identity comes it doesn't really matter like because it's still not you <laughs> Even mm. if the sense of identity comes, you know, like we can, it's only like, like, you know, if we give it meaning, then it will feel as though it has meaning, but really it doesn't. Like, I really feel this really strongly. I feel like if we look and see who we are, you know, we see that, like, I mean, I as a, not a feeling, but like just I as, as, um, just some kind of spacious emptiness or something is just like here before everything 
and you say like obviously like that's what I am like that's my most fundamental nature like everything else is just coming and going within me and it's just an idea really I, like they're just ideas so once you see that even once like it doesn't change like how can that change or maybe you have to look and ask yourself like the way Muji does in like the invitation I don't know if you know that it's a, a way of a kind of a guided meditation that he does and he he guides people to that place and then asks questions like that you know like can this change like, can this die all this so just as a way of really kind of um questioning and clarifying within yourself because i kind of feel like once you see that like where is the room to go back where is the room to go back to the mind but yeah like i don't know really why like so many of us do you know like i can see how of course it could happen like momentarily like for a moment because the whole nature of of the uh, maya or the world is like that the mind kind of almost like confuses your mind and you get pulled into it so i can see how it can happen momentarily but we never stay in that. like mm. i don't feel like anybody is really in there for like a really long time like or all the time or something like even everyone even not like spiritual seekers like we're actually just being ourselves like everyone is actually the self <laughs> and actually being themselves and experiencing themselves probably like the majority of the time <laughs> and like then we just have this idea like maybe like for a few like minutes or maybe i don't know a bit of time but like for some amount of time like we, we believe ourselves to be something else and we let that few minutes like cause us so much trouble mm. for especially after we recognize that like i'm not that like there's no need to ever believe it again even for a second and if you find yourself believing it for a second you just you can just laugh at it <laughs> <laughs> good good just, good i like the way dyson says he says something like, like he he had a good way of saying it but like he just wants to always be reminded to like not take himself seriously uh -huh. you know so to be curious what did he say something like to be curious and not be serious like hmm. who, who are you quoting now no dyson my partner oh okay got it <laughs> great great namaste to him <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Like we just take ourselves, and we can take ourselves very seriously, even like ourselves as a spiritual seeker, or even ourselves mm. as if we believe we're like a spiritual finder. <laughs> so, oh, I've, I, I am the self. You know, even that. <laughs> like that's it. It's a just like another identity. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me read verses 33 and 34, and you can comment if if something comes as to whether it um, underlines uh, sort of some of what uh, what's been said here. As you delve more and more into the deep conviction that all is Brahman and I am that Brahman, being effectively rid of the Sankalpa concepts, fixed ideas, and vikalpas, difference, doubts, <coughs> imaginations, regarding all, Brahman, I, and this, you should become the complete, perfectly full absolute, and changeless liberation will result. I say this in the name of Shiva, the Lord of all the universe. There's no doubt of what is said. Meditating on the deep conviction that all is Brahman and that am I is the preliminary means to attain supreme liberation. After practice, this conviction too will naturally fall off. Hence, son, most steadfastly practice the conviction that all is Brahman and that am I and attain true liberation. Like Ray said, it will naturally fall off. Mm. Yeah, that's good. You don't need to do anything to go in. You might not even notice. <laughs> it might be just like a certain amount of time goes past and maybe you're like, oh, that's not so much there anymore. Like, you might not. 
<laughs> as you're reminded by hearing certain words. Mm. just suddenly became really super conscious of me breathing into my microphone. Are you mm -hmm. hearing me breathing all the time? No, I didn't even know. Yeah, it's good. It's good to really um, dig into what I think I might be, you know, in front of you and just kind of pull it out and say, okay, mm. what, you know, what about this? Yeah. No, not that either. Yeah. That's, that's helpful. That's helpful. Sometimes we do get caught up in little ideas while we're like it's like we're not even questioning like who we are and everything, but it's just like you could be totally kind of wrapped up in some kind of way of being like wanting to be right for example yeah and like it doesn't really matter <laughs> it's just like as soon as you kind of notice or as soon as you have that kind of energy for questioning or looking deeper then you just do it then it doesn't matter like you know like i think then the mind could add a type of thing like oh this is terrible. Like you haven't been being yourself for like a month or <laughs> however long, or whatever. But like that's just like a kind of trick of the mind. Is that like it doesn't matter. It's just thought and like really only now, 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 now is the only moment that matters mm. ever. Like you know, it's just like like in a dream. You know, in a dream when you you're in a dream and then all these ideas come about to tell you like why the past is real you know because this happened yesterday and this happened so in the same way every moment is just like that it's like they're just ideas like there is no past really it really doesn't matter it's just like are you awake to who you are right now like are you being who you are right now and if there's something that says no like that's just the thought <laughs> It's just a thought because you can't be anything but who you are right now. Isn't it? Like how could you be anything else? <laughs> that what's, um, what's coming up is this real desire to be in just perfect alignment with you. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's beautiful. You are in perfect alignment with me. <laughs> ah, that's, that's interesting because um, there's this more. You know, I want more, I want more of it. Yeah, it's it's cool, cool to see it as it's bubbling up. Yeah. <laughs> mm, That's nice. kind of the, what happens in like attachments is that are like forming, forming an addiction, you know, and like thoughts are like the biggest addiction in a way. It's like, like we think it gives us something. We think it gives us something like that we want or think it gives, it gives us something good. So like we want it again. And I can even see it in Eshan. You know, like he could be in the middle of like eating something that he likes and like he's only at the start of it, like he's got loads left. And he's like, are you going to make this again sometime? When are we going to get this again? Like he's already thinking about the next time and like how we can have it again, how we can keep it, you know, like a word, like it's like already thinking about the future that this is going to be gone in a minute and will I get it again? And that kind of sense of, oh, I have to get it again. Are we going to get it again? <laughs> I knew it. I knew he was my brother from another mother. <laughs> Yeah. It's amazing like how you can see things in children and you know that they're they don't try to hide anything. You know, like they're totally just being themselves and expressing like whatever comes. So you can see so many kind of just human tendencies 
like become so obvious like somehow just seeing a child just for sure. myself, it was really interesting yeah yeah for sure what a great mirror huh? yeah mm. like nothing can make you better than you already are ah uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing can nothing can um, add add to and also nothing can take away Mm, there's, nothing, beautiful. there's nothing more there's nothing other than you that's like better than you or like more mm. glorious than you or something mm. like you are the the highest glory and you're complete even those words even to say you're complete it's like it feels so small like in comparison to 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 um, like I kind of feel like I don't even really know like there's a kind of a sense that I even as a human, even as a human, like expressing the divine because we're totally the divine, but even we can't really even know the magnificence of what we are really, even though we are mm. that. Because you know, I always remember like my Devaki, she's like this kind of saint, um, saint's good word. She's kind of like a saint or like a realized being <laughs> that lives in India. I remember her saying like, there's always, this world it's always like as if like two metals are mixed she said something like that like so the mind is always here you know so it's never just that like there's only like that pure she has a totally different way of expressing it. <laughs> but like it's never just that, that there's just only the pure divinity it's always mixed with mind so it's not mm. ever going to be like she was kind of comparing it to two metals mixed like you can never take out one of them like, so you can't really take out the mind so in a way, like it kind of continues to get purified, but we're still, this is our instrument, you know, we're seeing through this and um, experiencing through this in a way. Like, so um, I don't know, I just feel like you can't really know the true magnificence. You can get a sense of it and you can know that you don't even know how magnificent it is. You have to pick a verse now, something, uh, verse 30 or higher. Amba's choice. I read, um, uh, this is uh, chapter 22, and I just read verses um, 33 and 34, but... Um, if we're getting towards the end of the chapter, it might be nice to pick a verse towards that side. If you always practice in your heart the deep non-dual conviction that there is nothing ever as all, that all ever is Brahman, that Brahman which is beyond the reach of the mind, which is undivided, and which is of the nature of knowledge, is myself in being. You will be rid of all the difference that appears as division and attain liberation from the bondage of worldly existence. Hmm. Notice. Just as the river identity becomes dissolved, as the river merges in the ocean, this duality of mind and other things, falsely superimposed upon the unattached, undivided supreme Brahman, will, as it merges therein, become dissolved by the infinite, undivided certitude of the supreme. Thus, the sage Rubu, free from bondage, explained the indivisible absolute to Nidavis. Hmm. 
Shine on, you sparkly diamond. <laughs> oh, I love you so much. This is such a gift. Yeah. So I want to go give this to others. <laughs> mm. How is it where you are these days? Is there like lockdown or life is long? Like even lockdown? Some people are starting to get their first injection. Mm -hmm. um, at work, we are still working from home. Um, we're encouraged to very um, firmly keep ourselves separate from others. Mm -hmm. We are encouraged to wear not one mask, but two masks mm -hmm. when we're out shopping. Um, um, what else? It's, it's still very much uh, businesses. Uh, maybe open uh, like a, a business might be a restaurant might be open 25% capacity, mm -hmm. but it's still extremely limited. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, um, it's, it's the whole state of Washington for sure. And we're one of the better states, if you will, for the number of infections. So um, we, we see, see some light out there, but uh, the big contraction and at this point is um, uh, just getting organized to distribute vaccines. So that's sort of where it's at. Same, same over there in, in Dublin? Um, well, it's like complete lockdown here for mm. like since Christmas, which means ah. like only essential, what they call essential services are open, so like supermarkets and maybe hardware stores are open. And there's probably one or two other things open, but most things are closed. Uh, and luckily we don't have to wear two masks when we go to the shop <laughs> i can i find it hard enough to breathe <laughs> in one mask and no. um, you only have to wear one mask in the shop <laughs> and yeah i suppose people are probably getting injected so it's not really i don't watch the news or anything but like you still get to know what's going on my mother tells me the news because i live with my mother so she tells mm. Yeah, the news is another um, really odd form of addiction. It, it might be um, because of my, my age or something, because I remember when I was much younger, I couldn't care less. And I thought it was just, you know, sort of dirty and disgusting to watch yeah. political news. But you know, now somehow I can't turn away. Yeah. The politics is so exciting these days in America. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Like, well, like, when, at least when you don't live in America, it's exciting. Mm. <laughs> it's like reality TV. Mm. <laughs> okay. We we did um we did get away last weekend. We went um yeah. uh, west of here. Um, we cross Puget Sound and then we're on an area of Washington called the Olympic Peninsula because most of that area is a huge national park. Yeah. And we were able to, to walk in the, in the mountains for a little bit along a river. It was really, really quite beautiful. Yeah. And then down the hill where the river meets the ocean, um, there's a long, it's called uh, Dungeness Spit. It's a long... Uh, a strip of beach that's like um, six miles long. We were able to walk along that and mm -hmm. hear the surf. And yeah, although it rained on, on us a little bit, we were ready for it. And it was just a, a nice, uh, peaceful, uh, peaceful time outside. So we had a little bit of a uh, little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. um, is your wife not like fine? No pain anymore? Yeah, she's all fine and back to work, which is why we wanted to get away for yeah. a couple of days, because that was the, the last of the three months that she was off. And now she's perfectly fine and, and, and it's all good. Yeah. So our favorite thing is to uh, curl up on the sofa and watch the Netflix. So that's what we do when we can. <laughs> and do you have to work at the weekend or no work this weekend, uh, but satsang with Hanuman tomorrow. Mm. And then uh, um, I'm taking an uh, acting class 
and then after acting class comes the Super Bowl, which is the big end of uh, the football season here in oh, okay. uh, in the states. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, it's sort of a celebration of the end of the season. And yeah, uh, look she's doing well now, even with all the all the kind of pandemic. Sports are playing in it's it's a little surreal. Sports are playing in empty stadiums, oh, and maybe they, maybe they let a few people in, but they um they they had they, someone somewhere in the stadium can push a button to make the sound of the crowd. Oh, cool! <laughs> I think we're getting very creative. Aren't yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, that sounds really really fun. Yeah, it it is. It was like 10 people in a 10,000 people stadium. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it is. But I, I, I miss, I had missed, but now I have ice hockey back, which I really love. So I get to watch that and also in empty stadiums. So Dyson loves ice hockey as well because he is a pumpkin lad. So ah, yeah. So the Finns have a way of training uh, players at a particular position extremely well. So many of the best goalies in the world are from Finland. Oh, yeah. yeah, tell him I said so. All power to the yeah. Finnish goaltenders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <People are lost. laughs> okay. Thank you for okay. today. Very grateful oh. for our time. Oh, me too. To go the song mm. I think it just appeared right now. It, it, even like in that, like the song of just appeared right now, like because like, there's no past. But mm. the, the thing is, when there's no past, I was talking to someone about this the other day. She's doing a course in miracles, and she was struggling with a lesson, and it was basically saying something like, "The world that you see is not real." And I was trying to give her a bit of perspective on it. <laughs> now, like we can kind of understand, you know, that the past is not real. You know, it's just living in our mind and the future is not real. But also like the present is not really real either because every every second, like as soon as I say something, it's gone. Like how can you catch him? How can you catch it a moment of time? Can't we really catch it? Like so it's just it's just kind of as a way for the mind to understand it really. But like you can't really catch time. Like as soon as you say something, it's gone. If I go like that with my hand, it's gone. As soon as you do it, it's gone. It's like everything that's happening, like right now, it's already the past. So even like right now, you know, a minute ago we said like right now, you're just, like you're the self, you're yourself. Like, uh -huh. And right now it's not really in time even. Like it is and it isn't. It is and it isn't. <laughs> but mostly it isn't, if you have to be quiet. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, I said. Thank you. <laughs> See you next time.